Uh, thank you. Uh, my name's Kyan Maher. I'm from just south of here, a little place called Adelaide from South Australia. <laughs> Um, I'm the South Australian Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, but also hold a number of other portfolios, including uh, uh, Minister for Employment and Minister for Manufacturing and Innovation, which I think gives some pretty uh, unique opportunities uh, in this area of looking how uh, uh, Aboriginal people can better uh, participate in the, in the economy. The level of disadvantage faced by so many of our First Nations people is, in my view, the greatest stain on our society. It demeans us all, it demeans us as a country, and it demeans us individually. For as long as I can remember, trying to achieve, achieve equality uh, was a, a legal fight, a fight for land rights, and were, were major priorities for Aboriginal Australia, and quite rightly so. But civil rights and land rights have not delivered all the economic benefits that Aboriginal people need and Aboriginal people deserve. As we celebrate the 50th year of the 1967 referendum and the 25th anniversary of Mabo, I am absolutely certain that the next wave in overcoming uh, disadvantage is an economic rights agenda. Uh, one thing that uh, I've heard a lot of discussion today about that I'm particularly interested in is how to take better advantage of the land that uh, so many Aboriginal people have rights to. In South Australia, uh, the land holding of Aboriginal South Australians is quite extraordinary. More than half a million hectares are held by the Aboriginal Lands Trust. 58% uh, of the South Australian land mass is now under native title, with a third of 21% in Aboriginal freehold, like the Anangu Pitjantjatjara lands or the Maralinga Jaratra lands. But still, this isn't uh, coming anywhere close to delivering the economic benefits that we need to see. We need to see many more Aboriginal people in business with engineering degrees as successful business owners, and we need to see the same economic opportunities and successes that are afforded uh, uh, most other Australians to Aboriginal Australians. And there's many areas that uh, this can be done. I know there's a lot of interest in using culture, Aboriginal tourism, arts and culture as important uh, economic drivers. Uh, in many remote communities in South Australia, there's a significant reliance on Aboriginal artists to support their whole community for the sale of their artworks. Yeah, th this is problematic, I think, because it's not an expectation that uh, other Australians have to accept that uh, creating and sharing art and culture is often uh, pursued in its own sake, not as an economic driver. Uh, I think uh, there are, we've got to look at many other ways that give Aboriginal people an ability to participate in the economy that everyone else expects. Uh, there's a number of ways in, that we're aiming to do this in South Australia through economic uh, participation policies. Uh, the Department for Aboriginal Affairs sits within the Department of State Development in the State Government in our big economic department, and that's uh, quite deliberate. Uh, it's, we, we see, as I said, the uh, next wave of overcoming disadvantage is an economic rights agenda. A couple of years ago, we introduced an, economic an, an Aboriginal economic participation strategy, which focuses on building uh, opportunities for Aboriginal businesses and Aboriginal employees. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the work of uh, uh, Senator Scullion and the federal government in leading the way for Australian governments in terms of government procurement. You know, governments spend a lot of money, not just federally, but in every state around Australia, and making sure we use that as a lever to increase uh, Aboriginal economic participation is crucial. Uh, now in South Australia, for any tender below $220,000, uh, a, a government uh, agency, if it's uh, procured from an Aboriginal business doesn't have to get three quotes. So we, we're looking at in ways to incentivise using Aboriginal owned and controlled businesses. Uh, we also uh, have an Aboriginal participation plan which makes it easier and, uh, and gives effectively points on tenders if it's an Aboriginal, if the business is Aboriginal controlled and owned. Another way that we're increasingly looking to uh, make sure Aboriginal people uh, can uh, be much more part of the economic economy uh, the part of the economy is through the services that are provided to communities. Uh, particularly in remote communities, uh, for far too long, many of the services that the communities need have been provided by outside service providers and non-Indigenous service providers. Um, uh, in a number of areas, particularly in the APY lands, we're now looking to mandate uh, up to about a third of local employment and the uh, RASAC that provide municipal service across the APY lands, uh, which is federally government funded, is at, uh, I think uh, over two thirds now uh, and uh, unemployment. 
One of the biggest ways I think we as, a, we as a government and all of us who are involved in Aboriginal affairs can contribute is, is in private businesses. Uh, as I said, I have a number of other economic portfolios and one of the, one of the things that has really astounded me is you know, when I talk at industry group lunches, you know, I, I talk about the challenges facing South Australia on, uh, on industry, on manufacturing fronts, and at the end of speeches, I say, and I'm Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, and you know, I think there are great challenges. And uh, almost always, you know, leaders of industry, that's what they want to talk to me about, you know, about how can we be more engaged in employing Aboriginal people? You know, well, how can our business uh, contract with Aboriginal businesses more? And I think that's one of the real challenges, is to make sure, you know, do what we can, the levers as government, uh, as uh, being in government, but what we can do in terms of making sure that uh, we're helping businesses who have a desire but not the knowledge or uh, understanding of how to engage uh, more in the area of uh, uh, employing Aboriginal people or contracting with Aboriginal businesses. Um, I think you know, we've made some good starts, the federal government, what we're doing, the South Australian government, but there's still a lot more that we can be doing. And uh, the, the, the session before and the what I, we will hear today, I'm sure will help both Nigel and I in our duties in government do this.